To bring everything together, we'll finish off this unit with two short case studies for Dyson and IKEA. We have talked about the Dyson company several times in this course, and this case study is going to look at Dyson's move from vacuum cleaners to electric vehicles. If we relate this to some of the topics we've covered in the course, this case study is a good example of diversification, of identifying opportunities and threats, and capitalising on your company's strengths. We can also think of PESL and SWOT analysis as we explore what Dyson are doing. And also think about perhaps some of the more, the more intangible things, like corporate culture and leadership style. In September 2017, Dyson announced its move into electric vehicle manufacture, which you might think is a long way from cordless vacuums. But if you look at the technologies Dyson work with, so that's batteries, electric motors, turbines, fans, air circulation, purification systems and robotics, James Dyson himself said that if you add a chassis to all of that, you've pretty much got a car. So perhaps going from vacuum cleaners and hairdryers to electric cars is not such a radical diversification as you might at first think. Work started on Dyson's electric vehicle factory in Singapore in 2018. No doubt taking very careful account of all the relevant pestle factors before deciding where to site their first factory. And in 2019, Dyson announced that they were going to move their business headquarters to Singapore as well. Currently, the first Dyson electric vehicle is expected to roll off the production line in 2021. To support the Singapore factory, Dyson are investing £200 million in an automotive development site near Malmesbury in the UK, which will include a 10-mile test track which might sound a, an unusual decision. You might think that having development and testing right next to your manufacturing plant is the obvious thing to do, rather than citing it at the other side of the world. So perhaps Dyson decided it was easier to find employees with the right skills in the UK. Or perhaps they want to keep their vehicle development facilities close to their existing research and development facilities which already employ around 400 engineers. A case study from INSEAD Business School gives us a clue to some of, the, some of the factors that might have persuaded Dyson to choose Singapore as their manufacturing base. It quotes Dyson's CEO, Jim Rowan, who said, Our existing footprint in Singapore, combined with the nation's significant advanced manufacturing expertise, made it a front runner. So it sounds like Dyson already had some manufacturing experience in Singapore. But also, probably even more significantly, Singapore has a free trade agreement with China. And guess which is the world's largest market for electric vehicles? China. So maybe that one factor alone was the reason why Dyson located in Singapore. And if it was, then it is really difficult to see how, how anybody in the UK, at government or whatever level, would have been able to persuade Dyson to manufacture their electric vehicles in the UK. Singapore could say, come to us and have free access to the world's largest market. And the UK could say, manufacture here, and you might have free access to Europe. And then again, you might not if we leave the EU. So back to the business itself. We've established this, this technological synergy now between Dyson vacuum cleaners and electric vehicles. But I think there's also an entrepreneurial or a personal dimension here as well. James Dyson is first and foremost an inventor and a businessman second. So somebody who is really drawn to new technologies and who enjoys the challenge of solving old problems with innovative new ideas. James Dyson is reported also to have put around $2 billion of his own money into this project. If the Dyson company was run by accountants or a board of directors who were more cautious, 
perhaps Dyson wouldn't have gone anywhere near electric vehicles. They would have focused much more narrowly on their core products. Their vacuum cleaners, hand and hair dryers, fans and heaters. They would probably have taken the safer and the more predictable option. But James Dyson is probably driven as much by the technological challenge as by the business opportunities. Let's look at some electric vehicle statistics. According to McKinsey and Company, global sales of new electric vehicles passed the 1 million mark in 2017, and they suggest this could quadruple by the end of 2020. So potentially a market here enjoying huge exponential growth. The largest market is China, which is currently larger than Europe and America's electric vehicle markets combined. 94% of China's domestic market is served by Chinese manufacturers, which may be because China's electric vehicle industry is heavily subsidised, and figures of $50 billion over the last 10 years have been quoted. So we've got a really important non-tariff barrier to consider here. But it has been suggested that China will phase out subsidies by 2020. Interestingly, a year before, the first Dyson electric vehicles are expected to roll off the production line. So this is a very relevant external factor that Dyson have no doubt factored into their business plan. Let's look at the competition for Dyson electric vehicles. Because the electric vehicle market is relatively new, it is quite possible that supply has not been able to keep up with demand, so the market is nowhere near equilibrium. McKinsey suggests there may be as many as 300 new models of electric vehicle in the next three years. There is definitely increasing pressure around the world to move away from diesel and petrol engines. Norway, for example, want 100% of their new car sales to be electric by 2025. Norway is currently Europe's best electric vehicle performer. Better performing electric vehicles, able to travel greater distances without recharging, will make them more attractive to lifelong drivers of combustion engine vehicles. Increased volume should bring prices down. And perhaps vehicle design will improve to, to draw in the more style conscious consumer all of which will help drive demand. There is no doubt we can't carry on burning fossil fuels in the way we are at the moment. Countries will continue to legislate against petrol and diesel driven cars. So the demand for electric vehicles will be there and will grow exponentially, at least in the short to medium term. All of which is great news for Dyson, but a market with this much growth potential will attract a lot of competition. BMW, Citroen, Honda, Hyundai, Ford, Kia, Renault, Peugeot, VW, even Jaguar with their battery powered electric crossover SUV, the I-Pace, are all producing electric vehicles. And if you did a SWOT analysis on these mainstream vehicle manufacturers, you would identify their strengths, including having an established dealership network which Dyson don't have. Dyson have a distribution network for, for vacuum cleaners and hair dryers, not for cars. Some of these companies have been designing and making cars for over 100 years. Dyson will have been making cars for only two or three years when their first vehicle is likely to roll off the production line. So to conclude, do we think Dyson's move into electric vehicles will be a success. We've looked at some of the challenges and the opportunities. James Dyson doesn't think the move from vacuum cleaners into electric vehicles is too big a step. On the Dyson website he says, We've been researching motors, batteries, aerodynamics, vision systems and robotics for 22 years. Now the time is right to bring all our knowledge and experience together into one big project, an electric car. And perhaps the fact that Dyson are not an established car maker is an advantage. 
Existing car makers will have skills, systems, processes, technologies and cultures which have all evolved to produce diesel and petrol engine cars. Now they're going to have to adapt these to electric vehicle production, whilst at the same time carrying on producing conventional vehicles, at least for the next few years. Dyson have a wealth of engineering expertise within the company. They've been developing electric motors for almost 20 years and, according to their website, have produced over 50 million of them. And the company has a lot of experience bringing new technologies and innovative ideas successfully to market. But consider as well, James Dyson is now in his early 70s, undoubtedly the driving force behind the company. So what might happen when he decides to retire, or at least take a less active role? Will someone else really be able to, to take the Dyson electric car forward with the same charisma and passion and success? I would say the future for the Dyson electric car looks promising, but there are no absolute guarantees in business.